that's who you are, Lord. With you, my morning will turn into dancing. Cause that's who you are. Yeah, that's who you are. You don't leave us in the hurting. You
Okay. Good morning, all of you, brothers and sisters. So good to have you with us, and it is great that you have come early to prepare your hearts for worship. Such an encouragement. Let us uh, take this time just to center down, focus on the Lord. I'd like to, in application of last Sunday's sermon and uh, this Sunday as well, uh, give us a minute to come before God in His presence to confess any areas or any things that we know have displeased Him. It could be thoughts, it could be words or actions that we know have uh, displeased the Lord. We have disobeyed the Lord. We have sinned against Him. So let's take a minute on your own to confess your sins before God and then ask Him for forgiveness. Okay, let's do that and I'll pray for us after one minute. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, preparing our hearts to worship, thank you we can come and confess our sins before you in our thought, word and deed. Thank you for your word that tells us you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we confess. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus, His blood shed on the cross, His death and resurrection, providing us the basis for forgiveness, cleansing, restoration. Father, we praise you, you who have begun a good work in each one of us. You will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. You are at work in us because you are faithful. Your steadfast, loyal love for people of your covenant. And so we thank you for the new covenant in Christ's blood and that we are made holy and made your people. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your steadfast love. In Jesus' name, Amen.
vulnerable, so real. And it calls us, Lord, it repels us to worship you, truly, Lord. And so, God, as we come into your presence right now, I pray that, Lord, you fill our hearts with thanksgiving, declaring, Lord, you are good. You are good, oh God. Your mercy and your love be endures forever. Shall we just welcome the presence of God in our midst? He is here. So worship Him. Lift up your voice and sing to Him. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever.
just let your words minister to you. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. Is a mountain, you see your mountain mood. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Yeah. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. rise above our circumstances, Lord. Because we know that we have a good shepherd who loves us so much. We have a God who is so faithful, who never let us go, who never fails us. 
So people of God, would you just come to the foot of the cross this morning and say, Lord, here's my life, here's my heart, here's my prayer. I leave them all at the foot of the cross. Would you just come and feel me? Feel me, Lord, with your love once again.
been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been there.
so good and God you're so good no matter what your good God God you're so Indeed, Lord, we give thanks to you because you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. We thank you, the God of gods, the Lord of lords. You alone do great wonders. By your understanding, you made the heavens. You spread out the earth above the waters. Lord, thank you. You remembered us in our low estate. In our sin and hopelessness, you rescued us from our enemies, the enemies of sin and death. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ, your Son, to save us, Lord, to give us forgiveness and eternal life. We are so grateful to you, O oh God. When we didn't know how this life could be redeemed, you came. Thank you, Lord, for seeking us out, drawing us to yourself. And Father, as we come this day to worship you and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, we pray that your love will fill our hearts your steadfast love fill us, flood our hearts, cause your love to abound in us more and more, Lord, in knowledge and depth of insight, so that we may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. In His name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. He is good to us. He is faithful. Praise you, Lord. And let's welcome each other, front, back, uh, right and left. So good to worship together with you here in this place. And also welcome to you joining us online as well. It's better to be on site do come and worship with us on site those of you online do join us on site uh, some of us are new uh, with us but first just a warm welcome to all of you from our senior pastors reverend tanke kyong and reverend tony yo we're so glad you come to worship god together with us and we have something special for those who are new uh, with us on site there's a welcome gift okay those of you who are new online just hang on a little bit i will give you some uh, instructions about what to do but those of you here in the gallery or down here uh, this level okay if you're new could you at the count of three wave to me and the ushers will bring you a gift okay we're going to clap and acknowledge you anyone one two three anybody yes hello welcome Your sister here your friend or your relative hello two friends over, over there at the back ah in front as well your friend or relative can wave on your behalf uh, keep your hand up until the ushers come to you okay yeah okay anyone else up in the gallery welcome good to see you Wonderful. Praise God. So in the welcome back, uh, welcome pack, some information and also a gift for you. But let's, uh, let's all turn our attention to the service e-bulletin, okay? Service e-bulletin, there are QR codes outside on posters, but here on the screen for you as well, if you haven't uh, scanned it and gotten hold of the uh, service e-bulletin, okay? It's important. This one has the uh, sermon outline. It has 
uh, updates on what's happening in Covenant EFC. It has opportunities for uh, growth and discipleship, engagement in missions, and all kinds of other information. So do scan that if you are new. Um, and this is for our friends online. Uh, if you are new, there is a button right on top of this page. You could click that. It says, I'm new. Those of us who are on site also uh, do use that button, I'm new. And that will lead you to uh, give us your contact particulars. Leave that with us. And we would love to keep in touch with you. Okay, so could you do that if you are worshipping with us for the very first time? All right, we move on to one announcement, and this is for the Breakthrough Weekend. Breakthrough Weekend. Uh, okay, this is an integral part of Covenant EFC's disciple-making journey. Our men's, women's, and marriage Breakthrough Weekends are key platforms by which we encounter God and experience His life-transforming power to remove the things that hinder us in our growth as disciples and to help us to set a, a new direction and with greater uh, resolve to live for the Lord, to walk in a manner worthy of God who has called us into His own kingdom and glory. So this is uh, wonderful. It's great that we are you know, beyond the pandemic restrictions now. We can have this on site, an excellent opportunity for us to participate. Covenanters do sign up happening this November and December. And our church pastors strongly encourage you to register for either one of them, okay? The men's, the women's, or the marriage breakthrough weekend at the end of this year. And registration is now open. It's registration online. So uh, you can go to the e-service bulletin. The e-bulletin has the details and also uh, a way for you to register online. Do so as soon as possible. Sometimes the spaces go really fast, okay? So do uh, register as soon as you can. Now, if the only thing stopping you from registering is financial constraint, do talk to your CG leader, okay? Talk to your CG leader. We'll make this known to your pastor, and we'll do our best to see how we can help, okay? Don't let uh, the, the uh, cost be the thing that keeps you from going to a breakthrough weekend. Right, let's move on to the next part of worship, which is the offering. And this is something for Christians as a worship to the Lord, giving back a portion of what He has blessed us with and provided us with. If you're not yet a believer, please don't feel obliged to give. On the left-hand side, you have a QR code for the general fund. This is for our general ministry expenses of church life and ministry. If you're led to give to the missions fund, same QR code, please indicate MF in the remarks box. MF for missions fund, and your money will be directed there. On the right-hand side, the QR code for our building fund, and so the giving to this goes towards our savings for the future generations in our building vision. And this includes all the giving to the Seed Fund Faith Journey. Okay, so that's on the right-hand side. These QR codes are also available on our website and also outside at the uh, exits. Okay, so you could also scan those other times. Give a few moments and then we'll pray together. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities to hold the Breakthrough Weekends. And we pray that all who come will experience your touch, will experience your love and power, and experience breakthroughs that you want to give them in their lives and ministry, in their marriages and in their families in their work, and in their service. Thank you, Lord. We want to also pray now for those who, particularly those who have family member who is unwell, who is ill. Lord, we pray for your grace and your healing power. 
We pray for improvement in the condition and healing. And Lord, we pray, even in their illness, they will experience you. Lord, we pray for caregivers, the primary caregivers who may be going through a very long journey. Lord, they are weary, they are exhausted. Lord, we pray that you give them rest, renew them spiritually, physically, emotionally. Lord, uphold them, strengthen them, we pray. And now for these love gifts, tithes and offerings, Lord, we thank you for your provision. Lord, I ask you to bless the givers. I also pray, Lord, you would multiply these gifts for the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Praise God. And I just want to introduce our speaker briefly. Uh, it's Pastor Anne. She will be on video or live? Ah, there she is, Pastor Anne. Uh, she's live. And um, I've known Pastor Anne for a long time. Long time. Just now she was sitting here, so she shifted. <laughs> So, uh, known Pastor Anne a long time. I came to Covenant after I graduated 27 years ago. And 20 years ago, I have a very good memory uh, of uh, Pastor Anne. Okay, I, I was in London and Pastor Ed and Pastor Anne were there for sabbatical and I, I visited them at their home and Pastor Anne prepared for me lunch. Wow, okay, lunch. Huh? But what struck me was the love with which she prepared the lunch and served that to us, and also after that, uh, served me tea when I was having a chat with Pastor Ed in the living room. And I was, I was only an intern at that time, and the love and hospitality they've shown me really touched my heart, so I remember that vividly, even though it's been 20 years. Welcome, Pastor Ed, with the message for us today. Thank you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Good morning, church. I'm so glad to see you. Are you glad to see me? Today, I will continue our journey in Daniel, and we'll pick off from where Pastor Sharon Fong has left off. So we start with verse 20, Daniel chapter 9, verse 20 to the end. But first... Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Our Father in heaven, we come before you knowing that you are the Lord God and we are not God. You are God and we are not. You reign supreme. You are the awesome God. You're the God that is immovable, always, always abounding in goodness. So today, as we open up the scriptures, help us to understand and give us a glimpse of who you really are. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, life is full of surprises, isn't it? And oftentimes, we have many curveballs thrown at us. And life is so unpredictable. Sometimes, we're spiritually high. The next moment, we will fall flat. Because life is dynamic. But yet, the life in God should be dynamic, isn't it? Because life is a mystery. God is a mystery. And so through the train wreck experiences, sometimes to life difficult moments, there are some, some knots we can't untie. There are some conundrums we face that we can't get out of. There are so many puzzles in our lives that we have no answers to. But yet sometimes God came through for us. But there are times God asks us to sit and wait. See, life is dynamic because we seek to know God, we seek to know Him and His plans for us. And so for the longest time, we may want a word from the Lord, we may want wisdom from God, we may also want the way out so that we will be happier. You see, life is not about being happy. For us as believers, it is our sanctification of to be holy. For some, going to God is the last resort. Yeah, We try plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, and all didn't work, so we go to God. We have no choice but to pray, Law. And we pray because we couldn't make it work. 
So for some, God is the last resort. But for some, God is the first person they go to. Now that depends on the foundation of one's life. Whether we have put Jesus at the centre of it all or not. You see, today's topic is God answers beyond our expectations. When we least expect, God shows up. And sometimes, in not, not in the way that we want Him to show up, unexpectedly. God answers beyond our expectation because we have a great and awesome God. Say amen to that. You see, wasn't it Enoch who was taken up to heaven and not face death? Wasn't it Abraham who God provided a great driver to deliver a ram at the last minute so he doesn't have to offer his son as a sacrifice? And wasn't it Sarah who gave birth to the promised son at a ripe old age? Now all these are the surprises of God. And as we read through the pages of the scriptures, we understand why God did what he did. Because he is God and we are not God. There are many unexpected acts of God. There was a wise man who said these words, God hears our prayers, answers our prayers, and even exceeds our prayers. Why are you laughing? You disagree with this wise man? <laughs> He's my roommate, you know, for 42 years. God hears us. He answers us. And He takes note of all our cries and all those prayers that have not been uttered. God knows it all. Daniel 9, 20-27 is perhaps one of the most epic story, narrative of prophecy. And in the text, it highlights for us two life principles. Could you turn to the neighbour and say there's two life principles here? The first, don't give up whatever the circumstances. And the second, always look up because God has his perfect solution. Don't give up. Don't give up whatever the circumstances. You see, when the pages of Daniel 9 verse 20 was open, we see here Daniel was crying out to God, repenting of his sins and the sins of his people. So he was having this time where he is travailing in prayer, where he wants God to take note and that he wants God to forgive their sins and the sins of his people. And, and you know, we would expect with such great prayer and penitential prayer, with, with such wrenching of the heart, God will answer immediately, right? No, God didn't. It's not that God didn't answer. It's not just yet. Because God has not finished his work in Daniel's life, in the lives of the people who were then in the Babylonian exile. God did better. He did much more for them. See, the angel Gabriel appeared and in the most dramatic of ways, there was a message for Daniel. Let's read Daniel 9, verse 20 and 21. Verse 20. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my plea before the Lord my God for the holy hill, of my God. Verse 21. While I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at first, came to me in swift flight at the time of the evening sacrifice. You see the drama as it unfolds for us. You see, here they have a, a vision. He saw a vision of of Gabriel coming through with a very, very poignant message for him. He was troubled and perplexed. He was deeply weighed down by sin, the sin of his people and his own sin. And there is a longing for emancipation, for freedom, to be set free. He, he longed at, for, for a breakthrough. He longed that God would come and intervene during the time of such dark times of Israel. But he waited and waited. So there was a weight of sin. 
It is similar to Psalm 32 verse 3 that says, when I kept silent about our, my sin. This is also true for us, right? When we kept silent about our sin, my bones wasted away. Through my groaning all day long, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up like the fever heat of summer. So it was Daniel's penitential prayer, just like this psalmist, who prays out all the sins, all the draws. And Daniel is seen here pleading for God's mercy and compassion. And in sorrowful repentance, he came to God and asked God for his divine intervention. You see, the psalmist, just like Daniel, knew that God is unhappy with him and his condition. Unless we come clean with God, we cannot come close to God. It is the same principle today. To come close to God, we must come clean with God. There was a story told about old Joe. Joe and Bill are long-time friends. They have a love-hate relationship with each other. They love each other and then they hate each other and so on. So old Joe was dying and in his dying days, he asked Bill to come and see him for the last time and make amends and, and try to you know, do some un complete some unfinished business. So Bill came and, hey, hi, old Joe. And also they reminiscence over the past. And old Joe said, oh, I forgive you for this. Will you forgive me for that as well? So Bill said, sure, brother, you know, we'll see you in heaven. And so on. And they hug and they, you know, pray for one another. And Bill was about to walk out of the room. Then old Joe said, hey, wait a while, Bill. If I get better, this doesn't count. Our confession, our forgiveness must be genuine and real. We cannot play games with one another and with God. Our repentance must be authentic and we need God's approval for us to continue this life. So what was Daniel's privilege that the angel of the Lord Gabriel appeared? Now look at verse 22 and verse 23. He made me understand, speaking to me and saying, Oh, Daniel, I have now come out to give you insight and understanding. Oh, I love this verse. I have come to tell you this, that for you are greatly loved. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. So Gabriel came with a message. The message is you are greatly loved. You are faithful, God loves you, God approves you, and you are the one that God looks upon you with his own eyes. See, Daniel received these words of affirmation, assurance, and it was healing for him. This affirmation is also for us. Today, God is saying to us, you are greatly loved, so that you may understand and believe and hold fast to this insight, whatever you and I have done wrong, God is ready to forgive when we come clean with Him. See, there are three reasons why Daniel was greatly loved. Number one, his choices in life. He chose to choose God, period. In chapter one, he decided that he will not defile himself by eating the king's great food because it will defile his body. In chapter 6, Daniel decided that he will continue to pray with his doors and, and windows open, that he will continue to pray regardless of the king's decree, that if anyone is found praying to anybody else or any deity apart from the king, they will be thrown into the lion's den. But Daniel didn't care. He said that this is God's appointed time, and I will fulfill it. He continued to pray. His contrition of heart is real. There is a real repentance, real lamentation from his soul, from the anguish of the weight of sin. And in his deep and painful regret, he came to God. And in remorse, he cried out. But yet, 
Daniel wasn't only feeling remorse, he felt repentant. He was repentant. Now, there's a great difference between remorse and repentance. You want to know the difference? There are two major differences, the spelling and the pronunciation. <laughs> but truly, remorse is feeling sorry, sorrowful, but it is a sense of pitying myself. I feel that. You know, it's a weight upon the psychic, the soul. But repentance is different. Repentance is acknowledging that we have sinned against God, the Most High God, and there will be a turning around. There will be a desire not to do it again. There will be a desire that, you know, I will want to break from my past or from these bondages. So, re so repentance brings about change. But remorse is merely feeling sorry for yourself, just like Judas. He felt sorry for himself having betrayed Jesus, and so he hanged himself. There was no turning around for Judas. It was only remorse. And therefore, Daniel not only really repented authentically, he also was zealous for the glory of God. Now, most of us are zealously guarding our own reputation, isn't it? What people think of me, what people say of me, how do I appear and how do I look? And we're very concerned on the outward, but not Daniel. He's very concerned about not his own reputation, not what will happen to him, whether he'll be eaten alive by the lion. He will, he's very concerned over the glory and the name of God. So God used Daniel to lift up a model for all of us. This guy walked his talk. He's faithful, he's diligent, he chose well, and he weathered the odds and remained faithful to the end. So this is my first life principle that we draw out from this, ch this chapter, these verses. Don't give up. Whatever the circumstances, don't give up. There's a story told of a man stranded in the island and he was washed ashore and he started to survive, eating wild fruits and built himself a house and do the stuff. And there were many, many days that gone by. Probably he, he, he lost count, probably a year or more than that. And so he, was, he kept complaining. The first time he entered the island to the, to, to the last days, he was complaining and complaining. So one day, out of sheer heat, his house was burned down. The house that was made with branches and leaves was entirely burnt. So he complained again, he sweat and you know, he threw everything. And then he was, he was so spent that he just lied down on the beach. And then he slept there in the night. The next morning, a boat came. It was a, this little yacht that came through. And, and the, the guy came, two guys came forward and found him. Wow, lo and behold, he's saved. And he was rescued. And guess what? This sailor came and said, Hey, you know, you're very good, huh? You, you light up some fire. We saw the fire. That's why we came to the island. So he didn't know. Because he said, I didn't light it up. The, the, the house just caught fire by itself. Interestingly enough, sometimes when we least expect, when we start complaining about the things of our lives. Sometimes we can't untie the knots and, and the conundrums we face. We, we are often spent in trying to fix ourselves and trying to fix our own solution. Don't give up, but continue to trust God because we have a God who cannot fail and will not fail. The second life lesson for us is always look up. Go to God in the first instance, not as the last resort. Ask God for His wisdom. Ask God what is the right thing to do. Ask God for His timing. Ask God for His resources because God is always ready to pour forth, to pour out in our lives. He has got abundance. He is the answer. Don't go to Him at the last resort. Sometimes in counselling, you know, people come to you at the last resort, on the verge of this, on the, on the uh, deathbed of this, and, and so on. Then they come to you, please help, please help, you know. At the last resort. But go to God at the first instance. You see, you and I are far better when we can see the future, but most of us can't, isn't it? We are often short-sighted. We are often 
aloof when it comes to God. And sometimes we don't understand the ways of God, the wisdom of God. Interestingly enough, God didn't answer Daniel there and then. But God provided an answer. It is in the form of a vision. And this vision is so dramatic that it unfolds itself. There was this immediacy of God that appeared before Daniel. And God replied over and above what Daniel prayed and asked for. Daniel prayed for, for forgiveness. Daniel prayed for freedom. Daniel prayed that they would go back to their land and away from this Babylonian captivity. But God did far greater. He answered Daniel not just for the now, but for the future, that there will be a complete forgiveness. That, complete, that forgiveness is complete when Jesus the Messiah will come and cleanse us from sin. Now, this 70 weeks, starting from verse 24 all the way to 27, this 70 weeks of seven uh, is, is unpacked for us by Pastor David Chan. Please look at the devotional journal and you'll be able to read his historical background to Daniel 9. And I will lean heavily upon what he has written. He wrote this, The 70 weeks of sevens are divided into three distinct periods. The first period of seven weeks begins with a decree to rebuild Jerusalem and ends with the arrival of the anointed ruler. Then a period of 62 weeks that follows during which the city is rebuilt and then the anointed one is cut off. Jerusalem is destined and destroyed by the people, an army with a ruler who is to come. War persists to the end and when an unidentified individual ratifies a covenant with them for one week, he then desecrated the temple before meeting his demise, and so on and so forth. Please read Pastor David's write-up. It's done very well. So he further said that these are symbols, Daniel's prophetic to logical visions. It's a paradigm, an initial fulfillment of the vision that will follow by further partial fulfillment in history. Then there's opposition to worship to God, the desecration of the temple of God until it reaches its climatic fulfillment. And of course, we understand all that Pastor David wrote, right? Now, technically speaking, this is what we call progressive revelation, where God reveals progressively that there is an immediate fulfillment at that time, but in the final analysis, there will be a greater or whole fulfillment in the next time frame. We will know when. So technically speaking, this, this uh, progressive revelation helps us to unpack what God is going to reveal in the future. Verse 25 and 26 talks about the coming of the Anointed One. And He's none other than our Lord Jesus. What then is the essence of verses 24 to 27? The essence is found in Galatians 4.4. 4. Do you remember the verse? It says that in the fullness of time, the, in the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, that He may redeem those under the law and that we might receive adoption as sons. So here is the unpacking of the full revelation that in the part fulfillment during Daniel's time, but in the fuller fulfillment during the time of Jesus, where Jesus will come in the fullness of time to be the propitiation for your sins and mine, to bridge man to God, where we cannot, God came down and enabled that. So what then is our focus? Our focus is not on the prophecies, who is what and how is when, our fulfillment, our desire for this fulfillment is that we may know the Messiah. We may understand Jesus himself came to fulfill these prophecies. And Jesus is the answer. We can always look up because God is about his work. You see, God surpasses us in all our expectations. He provided a way out of, of the sin problem. 
He provided a way out back to God so that there's redemption, there's pardon, and there's salvation. A story was told about an old mule, an animal, a mule, M-U-L-E. And he just tripped and fell into a dry well. And lo and behold, the well was quite deep. So the farmer came and said, Oh, you silly mule. Why, how on earth am I going to get you out of that? And so the farmer was, was having very little resources. So he says, there's no possible way I could drag you out. Even if I get 10 people, I can never get you out, silly meal. And so he decided, okay, why don't I just bury this meal in a dried well? Yeah, because after all, the well has no water for the longest time. So he got a few friends and he started putting dirt into the well, trying to bury the, the meal, you know, and the meal was yeah, doing a lot of noise. So, so then the meal thought to himself, oh dear, I'm going to die here. I'm going to be buried alive. No way! You know? So he quickly, whenever the dirt comes, he will step on it, step on it, step on it. And before he knew it, the, the dirt and the, the soil covered quite a sizable height. And so he was stepping up, stepping up, stepping over, and then the the, the old farmer said, oh, you're quite a smart mule, huh? not that silly after all. So decided to pull the mule out. What is the moral of the story? There are life's experiences, whether it's betrayal or hurt or pain or agony in our lives, that's going to bury us alive. But you have to decide to step over, to step over, to step over. And the decision is yours to make. To step over all the difficulties in life. To bear with the pain. To understand that yes, there is no perfect solution, but God will provide a perfect solution when the time comes. So that I can trust Him today. I can trust Him fully. Because all we have is a faithful God. Not ourselves. Because we have come to the end of our roads, but not God. I was reading First Samuel recently and was very intrigued and very blessed when I read through again chapter 1 and 2. First Samuel 1 and 2, yes? It's about the prayer of Hannah. How he, she, because of the shame, she gotten because she was childless. And then she went to the temple and prayed and wanted God to answer. You see, Hannah was just praying for a baby boy. But what did God give her? God gave her a mighty prophet in the form of Samuel. And Samuel was very pivotal in anointing David. And David is the, the ancestor of Jesus, the, the Davidic line and the Messianic line. And sometimes we just wonder, when we just want something small, God surprises us with something big, something long-lasting, something that is unfathomable. It is interesting because God never give up on us and therefore encourages us to always look up. You know, there was a point in my life, my own life, that I run and I ran a mini old folks' home in my house. I have my set of in-laws, two of them, and my mother, so three old people in my house, under one roof. And because my mom has dementia and she goes into her violent moods uh, quite a lot, sometimes we have like a few episodes a day, sometimes it's quiet for two weeks, and then it starts again, you know. She starts knocking her head on the wall when you don't believe her. I say, you've eaten already, mom. No! Nobody feeds me. Everybody hates me, you know. And so she started her thing again and she would take whatever she has and throw at my father-in-law and my mate that will go there and catch it, you know. So there's a lot of drama at home. And also couple the fact that Pastor Edmund and I traveled quite a bit for our ministry. So the home is left to my two girls, yeah. They had a lot of fun without us. <sighs> We've passed eight years like that. Eight long years. During the COVID, my mother died, not due to COVID, but due to old age. And then during the COVID, my father-in-law died. So I'm left with one. <laughs> one surviving one, my mother-in-law. But you see, sometimes 
Life is like that, isn't it? When you have no way out. There was this lady who was praying with me, this, this couple, and she told me, Pastor Ann, don't worry, God will have his perfect solution. God will have his perfect solution. But as far as we are concerned, that's our discipleship. We want to say that we have, we have loved them the best way we knew how. And so in the last days of my father-in-law, we did palliative care at home. You get the doctors in, get the nurses in. My daughter went to be trained how to look after grandpa and so on and so forth. But you see, sometimes in life, we got to wait out for the time. We got to hang on. We got to wait in patience. You know, the years of looking after this old folks' home did something to my soul. I become more compassionate. I became more merciful. I tend to be more kind. I grow deeper. My well is richer. And so are my children. So is everyone at home. So sometimes when God says, wait, 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 because He's not done with the work in my life, with the work in your life. We have to wait out so that God will finish His work while we are waiting. And when God seems most silent, He's doing His deepest work. Don't we forget that. That in the waiting, we become, we better ourselves because God will look at us in favour. You see, in, in this journey of life, when we begin to understand the wisdom of God, the ways of God, God is saying, don't give up. Don't give up. And when we are anchored in God, there is always a calm within, isn't it? There's a sense of, of steadiness that guards our every step. We have to step over, step over whatever that seeks to dry us out or bury us alive. Don't give up because God is not done with you yet. He's not done with us yet. And don't give up because God's love is immense. We always need to go to God at the first instance. Go to God in the first instance. God desires to break all the chains that bind us. Take away all clutches in our life. I remember when I was raising up the children, I told them, you know, girls, you have to finish what you started. So let's say they started with four pieces of jigsaw puzzle and then, wow, so clever, clap, 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 clap. Okay, eight pieces, clap, 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 12 pieces and so on. So they progress in the number of pieces they could put a jigsaw. And when it comes to a time where it gets complicated, sometimes the children will just dish out everything and dump that in a box and, and forget it, you know. But I, I always tell the children, don't give up. One day I found my older daughter, Amanda, was mumbling to herself. And I went there to just listen in. And she said, don't give up, must finish. You know, they're they so cute huh? when they're toddlers huh? and they talk to themselves. Huh? That's the cutest part. Don't get up, must finish. Mommy will school, you know, or whatever. Huh? <laughs> so I said, why cannot give up? They said, no, cannot give up. Mommy will school, you know. So whatever motivation it is, is because mommy will school. But you see, not giving up is a life principle because not giving up means this, that one success experience will help me in the next successful experience. It will give me the confidence, the courage, the resilience, the tenacity for me to keep on at it and try and try and never say no. That's what it means not to give up. We step over whatever life curveballs are, whatever train wreck experience, God is saying that I can redeem your past. I can redo. Sometimes you say, how to redeem my past? It's like a piece of glass all shattered. Oh yes, God can do it. You can melt it down and redo something new, isn't it? That's what God is saying to all our broken pieces. He can melt it down and fashion something new. And that's why God is saying, never give up, always look up, because I am not done with you yet. I'm not finished with you yet. And God wants us to reach out to Him today. And in our own ways to say, God, whatever is in my hands, whatever I'm facing now, some of you may be facing bankruptcy, 
or a strained relationship, or an unequally yoked relationship, or difficulty with your spouse, your boss. Maybe you don't like your dog or you want to murder the cat, whatever it is. Whatever conundrums, whatever difficulties, whether it's small or big, flippant or serious, go to God. God wants to rework and rewire us so that, so that there is a centre, Christ the centre. Because you and I need to know the battle belongs to the Lord, not to us. I'd like to invite the worship team to come out, come up. I'd like us to bow in the time of prayer. Can I invite all of us to stand? The worship team will minister to us the song, The Battle Belongs to the Lord. But I'd like all of us to close our eyes now. Open up the palms of our hands. Whatever that you are holding on so tightly now, whatever that you are struggling for the longest time, the relationships, the business that is not working well, the jobs, the relationships, the conflicts, the betrayal, the anger, the, the hurt, the pain, whatever that cannot be resolved today, the Lord is saying, lay at my feet. The feet of Jesus, the cross. And He's saying to us, yes, I have my perfect plan for you. Don't give up. Look up to me. So I'd like you to pray a prayer. Those of you who are also online, pray the prayer of repentance. Pray the prayer and give it back to the Lord Jesus. He's saying to us, yes, I know you. I know your struggles. I know how hard you try. But today, don't try anymore. You surrender. You give to me all the things you cannot resolve. I will take over. I will redeem the wasted years. I will buy back your lost time. And today, the Lord Jesus wants to redo something new, something efficacious in your life. Let me pray for us, dear Lord. You see all that's in our hearts and in our hands. Today we offer to you our broken self. All the things we cannot resolve, we offer to you. All the restlessness in our hearts, all the curveballs we got, Lord, we hand it to you. All our broken pieces, all our broken toys, Lord, we hand it to you. We ask you to forgive our sins. We ask you to forgive the way we have made ourselves. We ask Jesus, you come through for us. You surprise us, Lord, with your deliverance. Show us much more and help us, dear God, that we will be all for Jesus. And help us this day, God, that we will name Jesus. We'll be so zealous for His glory and not just pity ourselves. Because God, we have a God. You are our God. A God who cannot fail and will not fail. So come through for us, dear Father. Sweep through this room and everyone who watches online with your Holy Spirit and cleanse us from all our defilement, all our sins, and make us anew. We pray, Lord, because we believe that you are God who hears us, who says that we are greatly loved, loved by you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So when I'll fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you So Fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the 
shining the shadows You win every battle Nothing can stand against the power of our God An almighty fortress You go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God You shining the shadows Battle belongs to the Lord. This is a declaration of faith. Not resignation, but faith. The battle belongs to the Lord. He is able. We are unable. We praise God for the ultimate victory that Jesus has won for us by His death on the cross and resurrection from the dead on the third day. And our future is secure. But today, the Word of God is clear. There are people among us. I believe that God wants us to receive intercession by our brothers and sisters praying for us. Application for all of us is true confession and repentance. But right now, I believe God is speaking to us and there are these groups of people. He wants us brothers and sisters to minister to them. In a moment, I will ask you to remain standing. No embarrassment. We will not ask you what it is, but we want to pray for you. Now, these are the groups. Those who are going through a very difficult situation and it's prolonged. You don't know when things will change. You feel like there's no hope. You are struggling it's a very difficult situation prolonged protracted in particular some of you it could be a caregiving situation you are a struggling caregiver in another group of people you are struggling with a very big conflict with a family member it goes on and on the triggers continue and whatever it is very difficult situation you're in, I invite you to remain standing, the rest sit down. Okay, no embarrassment, remain standing, we want to pray for you. If you are in a very difficult situation, it's prolonged, protracted, you've been praying, you've been struggling, remain standing, we want to pray for you. This is how we do it, okay? Remain standing. And those around us, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we are ministers of God. We want to intercede for these ones standing. And no need to ask them what it is. We pray for two things. One is that they will not give up. And that they will always look up. Don't give up. And so pray faith arise in their hearts. Pray for fresh faith. Pray for God to strengthen them that they will not give up. Pray that they will continually look up to God. Can we do that? Brothers and sisters around up in the gallery, there are many standing. Those of us near them, would you just stretch forth your hand, begin to pray and intercede for them. You don't know what the situation is, but God knows. And pray in faith. Ask God, Lord, strengthen my brother or my sister. 
Lord, cause them not to give up. Encourage them, Lord. Give them fresh faith. Help them to always look up to you. Let's pray. Let's, let's ask God. He hears our intercession and He will intervene as we pray. Let's pray. Let's continue to pray. And then in a few moments, I will lead us and close in prayer. Let's continue to pray for our brothers and sisters standing up. Lord, help them. Father, we thank you for hearing these intercessions for our brothers and sisters. Lord, we ask in faith that you will strengthen them, fortify them with your word and by your spirit, Lord. You know the situation they are in. It's so tiring. It's so trying. Lord, they are losing hope, some of them. But today, as we pray, we believe, Lord, fresh faith arise in their hearts the hope that is in you, our God, our good God, our victorious God, our loving God, whose love is loyal and steadfast, His goodness endures forever. Lord, you hear and you will answer our prayers, Lord, that our brothers and sisters will not give up and they will always look up to you and you will continue your, your work and this work, God, you are doing is a precious work, Lord. Producing the fruit of righteousness in their lives. Beauty, conformity to the image of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. The fruit of the Spirit and the intimacy and the nearness of God, the experience of Him, even in these tough times. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing and answering and even exceeding our prayers. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we all stand together? We give the Lord a big hand. Praise you, Lord. You are good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we stand, receive the benediction. I want to pray for all of us. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As you take your seat for a few moments, we just flash up for you the res uh, reflection questions for us. And then I will dismiss us. Okay, just take a note of this and I encourage you to continue to process with God. Share with your loved ones and good friends and pray together. The Lord bless you as you go into the week. Those of you who require prayer, do come forward. The Prime Ministers would love to pray with you and for you. God bless you.